Hi. In this video, I'm going to go over how I set up my layers for a painting. Um, this painting is of uh, a guy in a skateboard, hoverboard, um, looking at like a dystopian city. So, we'll go in the very, very beginning. So, I start all my paintings with a sketch. So, uh, you could see originally there was like two, two characters looking into, into the city. Um, however, yeah, this is me starting to begin the painting process, but I quickly turned it into 3D to help me paint a little bit faster and also to get perspective. Um, but it does a lot of work. It's a good starting point. So I rendered this out of Octane and I used Maya to set up the scene. I had some Kitbash models, Kitbash together. Uh, use a displacement map to get some like texture for the, the city ground. And then here's a mask that I rendered out. And then with the mask, I had, I uh, found some clouds, masked it away, set the clouds to be like a low opacity. And then it gives, it gives some texture to the city. Here's some like large, uh, like gradients that I paint in just like early on. So there's like some sunlight that I was trying to paint in that was like poking through through the city. And here's another mask, but it's a white version, so it's a little different. Uh, here are some like street lights that are like illuminated by the fog. You can see a little bit of texture coming in. I try to add a lot of texture in the painting as much as I can just to like make it visually interesting. And then from here, I probably started painting the foreground. So foreground, uh, chances are I collapsed a lot of layers, but you could see like, this is like the two base layer of the foreground, just to mass out the shape. Um, yeah, I use reference to paint this. So I knew I wanted to paint like a cyborg kind of person with a sword. Uh, so that's what I started with. Um, I use, yeah. Use reference of a guy sitting on a skateboard. Uh, then I started painting some lighting. And then, chances are I probably went back to the city again. So I work back and forth a lot. I work all over the place. Um, some more street lights. More street lights. And now this is where I started adding some texture into the city. Uh, I would take an image of the city uh, at night time and then set it as a screen layer and then change the levels so that only the lights come through and then I would transform uh, these images perspective transform so that they match the uh, perspective a little bit of the of the building so it doesn't look like it's super just slapped on so a lot of times you get like a lot of happy accidents but sometimes it was very obvious that slapped on you want to like try and edit it a little bit uh, here's some more city lights that I just like use screen layer and just applied on it seems like I turned down the opacity a little bit <clears throat> here's some bloom that I added just to you know get not make the background so dark just uh, like a first layer of fog in a way the sun it's important that's what he's looking at so we gotta add the sun in there some more fog um, and now some street lights <clears throat> the street lights this is to help um, break up the fact that I kind of use images to start with so this helps give like bigger shapes to look at instead of all these tiny shapes uh, and now some color dodge uh, the color dodge helps with getting like variation of color. I usually add it in areas where there's lighting, so I probably color dodged here, here, and it's just good to like get that kind of like bloom effect that you would see from a camera, but it also helps you get a lot of like different color variations. Uh, here I started painting some bevels. Uh, now I'm probably going back to the foreground, and I did a selective color whole image um, on the dark the dark values of blacks and I would do this so that I can set, selectively add color on the, these black values because when you paint traditionally you don't use black and a lot of times when people edit photos they tend to edit the blacks to be a color so I personally prefer that as well um, some people don't like to do that but it's personal preference 
Uh, here I chances are I collapse this layer as well, but it's just more editing, like more painting, uh, refining, refining the um, the character, adding in like dark, sh like the AO, the ambient occlusion, and like just like the dark values to like refine the shapes and the form. Painted the hair a little bit, some hair edits. Uh, the glow of the skateboard is in this layer. And then this layer is even more refining. So you could see right here, like I like defined the metal arm a little bit more, designed a little bit. Um, I really like like sci-fi design, so I probably took a lot of inspiration from that. And then painted in more detail on the shirt, and then refined the scaffolding a little bit more. Um, you could also see, like, as I'm painting, I try to define the material properties of the platform and everything around the best I can. Um, it's important to try and have different material properties. A lot of times when people paint, it's kind of flat. They just paint in, like, a, maybe like a, like a egg eggshell material, but in reality, materials tend to have or in reality, things have a lot of different material properties, like metal, like shiny plastic. But it's hard to paint that because you have to paint in reflections. And even now, like this painting doesn't have very good reflections. But I'm I'm still learning how to paint reflections a lot better. But yeah, learning process. Uh, this layer, I gave him like a keychain strap. It's cool techwear stuff. Uh, here's a failed attempt at uh, a glow that I wanted to have, like a pattern glow from the skateboard. Um, so here's like another reflection I didn't use. You can see if I were if I were to do this again, I would probably have this building in the reflection of this of this platform, but I didn't. I didn't. I didn't think about it before, so I'm gonna add it now. Uh, this layer, I added some like signs to uh, like give the city a little bit more personality. Uh, here's the perspective grid I was using as I was painting the foreground. Um, the foreground is a little bit off perspective. Uh, I found this out a little bit later when I was done painting, but uh, the way, the reason why it looks off is because the leg, the perspective of this person does not match the perspective of the platform. So that's the part that really like threw it off. Uh, now this is a layer to define material properties of the glass. So the glass is reflective. So I made sure to add some like city, city lights in there that it reflects. Uh, some, just some like, like tech lines for the platform he's sitting on, uh, some AO, ambient inclusion on the glass, some smoke because it's the city so they'll have smoke coming out of like the roof. And now I wanted to have the camera be sort of like level with this character so it's above the city so you would see the top of the roofs. Uh, so I wanted to paint in like some lighting that was bouncing off the sky on the top of the roof. Uh, so this layer is like the rim light. Um, the rim light helps separate the foreground from the background. Also, it gave me a chance to add some color into the rim light. Adding like variation of color is always nice. It breaks up that digital, that very, very digital look. Though it is a digital painting, but it helps give it variation. This is like more uh, street lights being illuminated by the blue, the fog. And now this is like another layer of bloom, so bloom's always nice. Oh, it's a color dodge bloom. So I think a lot of times I paint uh, bloom using color dodge. Here I did a fog layer, um, and I only did it on the city. As you could see, I used it as a masking layer from the foreground. I use a masking layer using the foreground and the city that I rendered out earlier. And I decided to do this because I saw that the value of the character's pants 
was almost matching the value of the background and it was like too close so I wanted to bloom it out so that it would be pushed back a little bit. Uh, here I painted away the, the antennas just because it was it seemed distracting. Here I started adding blur to the city. Um, I had two layers of blur because I wasn't sure if one layer was enough. Um, blur is there because it was a little bit too sharp, so it was distracting without it. Also, when there's a foggy environment, the fog tends to blur the light coming into the camera, so I wanted to make sure that, yeah, since the city was foggy, I blurred a little bit in the background. Now, let's see. So after all that, I would collapse a layer and turn on a um, chromatic aberration. So pretty much chromatic aberration just adds some more color interest in the lines. So if you zoom, if I zoom in here, I turn it on and off. You can see like there's like a, this red line right here. So that's chromatic aberration. It also there's a little bit of vignette as you can see the edges. It's like darker. Um, it helps by just giving the image a little bit more color on, on the edges. It only happens on the edges. Uh, there should be no chromatic aberration in the center right here. It's something that happens when you take a photo. A lot of times when you take a photo and you look at the edges, you will get a little bit of chromatic aberration. And you could fake that as well in Photoshop. So, might as well. Like when I paint, I try to just emulate a camera as best as I could. It's not always perfect. Here I, I did a curve layer um, just to add even more color variation. So I would just use a curve, uh, add a curve modifier or curve layer, go into each channel and make all these like crazy curves and then set it as overlay at 5%. But if you, I turn this up to 100%, you could see how like intense the colors are all over the place. But that's why you want to set it at a low percentage. And then to get some color variation. Another selective color, as I did earlier, it's to like, you can see in the selective color property, it's only on the black layer that I wanted to like have color in the black layer, just so that the image doesn't look dull. And then here are some, so I added these signs after I, um, painted this image. I, I was selling this as a print in San Diego Comic Con, so I wanted to fix some stuff and add the San Diego Comic Con logo. And yeah, that's the that's how I set up my layers. So feel free to yeah, like and subscribe below. Uh, if you want a more like different types of tutorials, you can comment below as well. And yeah, thanks for checking it out.